Hi everyone. In this lesson we're going to be tackling the paradigm of the definite article. Remember the definite article is uh, the as opposed to and. So this is what we're looking at, the. Talking about a definite thing, definite noun. So what's a paradigm? Well, as often in Greek we use Greek words to talk about uh, the the different grammatical functions and, and different ways of talking about language and language learning. So this is coming from a Greek word that we'll learn in a bit, uh, paradigma. This means um, something like example or illustration. So what we're doing here is we're illustrating the full scope of what the definite article can do. So let's look at that. Let's draw up a little chart. And of course we were exposed to the um, definite article a little bit last week when we were learning how to work with first declension nouns. So this chart will begin to look familiar. We all have singular over here and plural over here. And then we'll have case in this kind of far left column. So again, we'll do the standard order, nominative, genitive, dative, and accusative. And we can leave out right here uh, the vocative, which we had talked about before. This is the case of address, but remember that it doesn't have an article. Uh, we just used a kind of placeholder, this O, oh, uh, smooth breathing, circumflex accent over an omega, and this is how you'd say, O oh, Socrates, O oh, Socrates, this sort of thing. But we can kind of forget about the vocative for right now and focus in on these actual cases that we're going to be working with. So let's go back and talk about grammatical gender. We remember that this is different from actual human or, or um, I guess they call it biological gender in the sense that we have these three that apply to different things. Justice is feminine, the soldier is masculine. Uh, these things have some correspondence to reality and real sexual gender, uh, but have a life of their own in language. So we call these grammatical genders. It's not a one-to-one -one uh, correspondence between real gender and grammatical gender. So again, we have masculine, feminine, and neuter, and this is just the traditional order of writing them. But we, re we remember that we hit feminine nouns last week with our first declension. So if we can write this out as a bit of a review. Hey, tes, circumflex accent, te, iota subscript in circumflex accent, and then tain. In the accusative, and we'll just give that an acute accent for right now. And then in the plural, we had high, tone, tice, again, circumflex, always circumflex over the genitive and dative, and then tas. And this is a long alpha. I'm marking that. Your Greek textbook won't, but this is to begin with. So these are feminine uh, articles, and what can we say about them? Well, in the nominative case, we have they begin with vowels or diphthongs and have a rough breathing, and they're proclitic. What does that mean? That means they have no accent. We, we could imagine that there'd be an accent there, but there isn't. We're just working with a rough breathing over hey in the singular and then high in the plural. As we move into the oblique cases, remember that's what we can call uh, these cases over here that are non-nominative. These are obliques. So here they all begin with tau. They all have a accent, circumflexes over the genitive and dative, and then uh, acute or grave in practice usually over uh, the accusative. Uh, long etas in the singular as a result of that great vowel shift that we see in Attic dialects. Remember shift happens. And then over here we have uh, a diphthong. This isn't really affected. This is the longer kind of Doric alpha. Uh, that's an older form that has stayed with us in the plural. All right, great. So this is our feminine definite article in the singular and the plural. Let's uh, talk now about the other genders. Again, these are grammatical genders. They don't have any correspondence to reality necessarily. So in the nominative masculine, we have haw. So again, we have no ta, um, a vowel with a rough breathing and no accent, proclitic. Then we have tu, diphthong, omicron, upsilon. In the dative, we have to with an omega and an iota subscript, and again, keeping that circumflex. And then in the accusative, we have ton. So you can see that we here we had an eta kind of 
vowel working our way down. Here we're, we're characterized by an O sound, a short omicron here, a diphthong here with upsilon, but then this is a long omega. Really, it's just the long version of this omicron, and then again, short before the nu. Uh, we didn't see this over here. This isn't an epsilon or an alpha here. Um, so it, there's not a, a complete logic to it, but these are things that, uh, because they're so frequently used, can stand to be a little bit irregular. But let's move over here to the masculine plural. We have hoy. So again, similarities. Remember too that these, both of these, I'll put a little asterisk here, both of these diphthongs tend to be short at the end of words or here where they're alone. Um, this is for the purpose of accentuation. So this will become significant when we actually get to nouns, but right now we're just talking about the article. So put this one in your memory bank. All right, and then plural masculine tone. So identical in form to the feminine plural. So that's potentially handy. Here you might have guessed it, toys versus tice. So again, just a difference of diphthong. Here instead of a long omicron or a long omega, uh, we go back to the diphthong, tus. So that is naturally long, and then again, we can just give it an acute accent for now. Well, now let's move to the neuter. So we had ha, he, again, no ta here, no accent, both proclitic. This changes when we get to the neuter. We have ta. So this one stands out. It might look a lot like an oblique case, but it's not. It's the neuter nominative. But then as we move through the rest of the neuter, in the oblique cases, it looks a lot like the masculine, two is equal to two, to is equal to to, and something that you'll will be a handy thing to remember when throughout learning Greek is that in the neuter, all right, the nominative in neuter, nom, nominative equals the accusative form always. This is a handy trick. So if it's ta in the nominative, you can be sure that it will be ta also in the accusative for the neuter. Well, let's move to the plural then. We had a, sh a short omicron here. Here we get into a short alpha, ta. So again, it won't be marked, but this is short. So we might say over here, that's really ta with a short sign and then again, the accent. But again, the uh, in the oblique cases, we're getting similarities between neuter and masculine. So again, tone. And then over here, we'll have toys. But then we can invoke our old rule that we just had over here. Nominative and accusative neuters are the same. Pardon for me for that. So ta, and again, ta, and again, both are short. So these, let's see, four by six, 24 forms are critical. They're the definite article, and they show up all the time in Greek. So memorizing this paradigm, this example, this illustration, is going to see you through a whole lot of work down the line. All right, we'll join you next time when we talk about masculine nouns that are of the first declension. They'll look like these uh, feminine forms, but they are masculine. Uh, it's exciting. We'll see you then.